G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the penultimate, just the tips for season 2024. Jesus, kind of gone quick in a, in a sense. I can't believe there's only, well, this and one more episode of just the tips I'm going to do for the rest of the time that I live in England. But we've got two juicy preliminary finals to get through. As always, we'll announce how everyone did this weekend and get into two hopefully ripping games. That's what we want as neutrals. Most of us are neutrals this weekend and uh, we want to see good prelims and we want to set up a really good grand final. So first of all, we'll unpack how everyone went last week. For me, I would love to take the time to tell you all the tips that I got right last week, but uh, I got zero tips right. I incorrectly tipped Hawthorne. I incorrect, incorrectly tipped GWS and I was, you know, we were all close. There was a lot of people that were at zero. That was very close to being too right with both games being decided by under a goal. But there were plenty of people who did far better than I this weekend. So we'll start with the members tipping competition. The winner this week was Rotowash with two correct tips and the margin of 31. So by my math, Rotowash would have tipped Port Adelaide by 34 points and ended up being three points. And that was still the best tipping performance in the members competition. In terms of the general tipping competition, the winner was Ara Pipol, if I'm saying that correctly. The only person to get two correct tips out of a possible two and get the margin bang on. I think there was a few that got one off the margin. Ara Pipol was the only person to get it perfect, so well done. The members tipping competition is still led by Real Swift, who has been leading all season and pretty much has one hand on it. The win, that is, I should clarify, with 143. And I think Rogi Riot is second with 140. And then we've got the general tipping leader, who is Ryan Chappie, who I feel like I've seen that name before. But he's taken the lead from Wet Toast Eagles with two rounds to play with 146 correct tips at a margin of 709. So well done, everyone. You're absolutely killing it. All right, let's crack into this weekend of prelims. We start with Sydney versus Port Adelaide at the SCG on Friday night. This was my predicted grand final when I did my finals predictions at the start of the finals, obviously. Port Adelaide getting done by Geelong meant that that is no longer possible. They'll have to do it the hard way to make the grand final to beat Sydney. Now, Sydney, on the other hand, obviously have a bye Interesting little variable here where, you know, they didn't play in a semi-final. They also had a pre-finals by. To what extent that interrupts their preparation uh, remains to be seen. But that has been a thing for a while now. And it doesn't seem to throw off too many teams who win their first final. Port Adelaide, by contrast, you know, they've had two uh, home games following a bye. The first one was a 14-goal loss or something like that to Geelong in Adelaide. And then they backed it up with a bit of an arm wrestle, a real war of attrition against Hawthorne, which went down to the dying minutes. So let's consider the head-to-head -head between Port Adelaide and Sydney, that this is a really interesting one. So the last time they met, Port Adelaide won by a whopping 112 points. I'm sure we all remember that because it caused a big ripple in the AFL at the time. The team that was leading and would go on to win the minor premiership, losing a game by 19 goals is absolutely absurd. 148 to 36. And I think the score was 72 nil or something at one point. Diabolical run of form for City there. That was by far their worst performance. I think they'd lost to the Bulldogs heavily the week before, but either way, this was absurd. It was absurd. And we definitely had some doubts around the Swans and their premiership chances when that game happened. So it's not completely isolated to that game, this head-to-head -head form. So Port Adelaide have actually beaten Sydney in all of the last eight encounters between these two sides, which is stunning. Not many people, not many teams, would have a record of dominance like that over the Swans, considering they've been a good team for a while now. But to dive into that a little further, the last time they actually met in Sydney was that game where Ollie Florence kicked after the siren and his kick fell short. Ali really punches it away, put Adelaide hold on. I want to say that was one of the first games of 2023. Sydney finished eighth that year, put Adelaide, uh, well, they went out in straight sets last year. So Port were the better team that season. It's also worth noting the previous four clashes were all at the Adelaide Oval and Port Adelaide won all of them. The last SEG clash before 2023, you have to go all the way back to 2018 and that was in round two and Port Adelaide won that, bearing in mind, I don't think either side was particularly good in 2018. So I guess the, the takeaway there is yes, Port Adelaide won all of the last eight. Most of them have been in Adelaide and the last time when they played in Sydney and Port Adelaide won narrowly, I think Sydney's come a long way since that game. So maybe it's not as cut and dry as 8-0 would suggest. Nonetheless, it still helps Port Adelaide's cause that they tend to play both the SCG and the Sydney Swans well. In terms of the style of these sides, we know Port Adelaide, they do have that massive outlier where they got smashed against Geelong, but generally they're a very heavy inside 50 ball side. They get the ball inside 50 quite effectively. They're number four in the comp over the last five weeks. By contrast, Sydney is below average. For Port Adelaide, it's probably been a case of forward line efficiency. Georgiatis was a big factor against the Hawks and while we remember Rioli in the clinch moments and again, another forward, Georgiatis has a tall target 
was very effective and arguably also the difference between the two sides. Both of these sides are interestingly quite a low possession team in general. They're both bottom five for contested ball and generally speaking, don't actually rack up a heap of the footy. So it'll be an interesting blend of the two styles here. Obviously recording this a little bit too early to make calls on, on team news. You know, if you were watching the semi-final, you'll recall Horn Francis went off late um, with what appeared to be pain in his high hamstring. I believe that's just cramp as far as I can tell, um, which is going to be huge. And if Horn Francis were to hypothetically miss, this game would be far easier to tip, I think. I, I expect a good game here. I think Port Adelaide, you could make the argument they spent a few petrol tickets last week, but that doesn't mean they're going to not play well. And I think they'll think this is a real chance for them. They've made a whole stack of prelims under Hinckley and fallen short. Sometimes they've fallen short massively. Sometimes they've fallen just short. This is gettable for them, considering A, their good record against Sydney, and B, the, the reality is that Sydney are just not, you know, they're not invincible by any stretch of the imagination. And they won their first final against a good GWS side, but they did come back from five goals down. So... This one is going to be a tough tip. I am going to back in the home side here. I think Sydney should qualify for the grand final. They'll break their streak against Port Adelaide. I'm certainly not ruling Port Adelaide out of an upset win here, but I think I'm going to go with the Swans here. I think it'll be a close game throughout, and they'll kick a couple of late goals to make it about 21 points. So Sydney qualifying for the grand final. The second prelim is between Geelong and the Brisbane Lions at the MCG on Saturday evening or a twilight game or something like that. Interestingly, this is actually the third time, I believe, these two sides have met in a prelim. 2022, Geelong smashed them. I think it was like 70 points. Geelong obviously went on to win the premiership, ironically, to play Sydney in the grand final. In 2020, they played a Gabba prelim, which Geelong won heavily as well from memory. I don't know what the actual margin was, but Geelong won comfortably. And then you have to go back to 2004, where the Brisbane Lions won this, and then ironically, play Port Adelaide in the grand final. So an interesting 20-year cycle here. We had a 20-year repeat in 2003 and 2023, the same grand finals. Brisbane versus Port Adelaide is still possible this year, and Geelong played in the prelim in 2004 as well. Very interesting stuff. So what are the form lines here? Well, Geelong finished the season strongly, had a good win in Perth against Fremantle. I remember noting that was a really strong and mature performance and I felt like Geelong had shown improvement towards the back end of the season. They've carried that into finals only to annihilate Port Adelaide by 14 goals on their home deck and that for me, really shifted my view on Geelong. They're doing a lot right. We'll get into stats more specifically. By contrast, the Lions, their two finals so far, got a big lead up against Carlson, then kind of coasted to a five goal win. They let the Giants get a 44 point lead on Saturday night in Sydney, only to come from the clouds and steal a victory with an awesome quarter and a half effort. So they'll be brimful of confidence, albeit we do factor in Brisbane will travel from Sydney back to Brisbane, presumably, and then play Geelong here. Uh, in what is not truly a Geelong home game, but we know that they're pretty good at the MCG in finals generally. The last time these two set sides met each other was earlier this year in round six. This game was at the Gabba, and the score was 63 to 37 in Geelong's favor. Now, they had very contrasting fortunes to start the year. Geelong won, did they win all f seven of their first ga games? And I think the Lions started the year two and five and were a real form slump. So a fair bit's changed there, although Geelong have really come back into that top level form, as you can see by the back end of their season. Interestingly, as far as I can tell, these two sides have only played two games at the MCG against each other ever. It's always at the Gabba or Skilled Stadium or GMHBA as it's called now. Those two games were in 2022, the prelim and the 2004 prelim and they've won one each so not a whole lot to go off there there is the mcg factor here with the lions in recent times they've played okay there i know they, they beat the demons there i think that must have been 2022 that was in a big final you know they nearly beat collingwood both in the grand final and late in the season this year so they're better at the mcg than they were previously but there's no doubt it's a disadvantage here on the other hand though the, the cats play the gabba really well so it doesn't really matter where this game is in my opinion some other things to be aware of you know the lions goal kicking continues to plague them a little bit so while they came home with a wet sale against the Giants. They were six goals, 14 at one point. Now a previous record of bad goal kicking does not preclude the Cats from being unlucky and the Lions having their radar on it. If the Lions are kicking accurately in this game, that will go a long way to winning the game. But interesting convergence of the same, similar sorts of styles of these two teams as well. I've talked about it a bit, but the Cats midfield had some doubts this year, including by myself. But as they meet, Geelong is the second best clearance side in the last five weeks and the Lions are third. Geelong are also the number one scores from stoppage team in that same time frame, whereas Brisbane are below average. Over the last five, however, Brisbane have emerged to be the number one ground ball side in the competition and Geelong a third. And in contested ball generally, Brisbane Lions are number one 
and Geelong a third. So the profile here speaks to two sides that are strong in clearance, strong when the ball's in dispute, and that is ultimately going to go a huge way to deciding this game. Now, as for team news, I think Tom Stewart may or may not come back. Not too sure what the deal is with Tom Hawkins as well. Uh, and then there was some talk as well of Lockie Neal potentially being a bit sore. I'd be very surprised if Lockie Neal doesn't get up. So there's a little bit to play out there in terms of selection, who's going to be available. You think Lockie Neal would be a, a big one. I know that the McCluggage and Ashcroft were outstanding and stood up when Lockie Neal wasn't a big factor last week against the Giants. But I still think if Lockie Neal were to miss this game hypothetically, that would go a long way to undoing Brisbane's chances. By contrast, if Geelong don't have Tom Stewart, I think they've proven they might still be all right. So with that all being said, I think this prelim will be closer than 2022. Um, you know, Geelong are still a great side. I am still yet to be convinced they're the same quality side they were in 2022. But I still would be surprised if Brisbane got up here. There's a bit of extra travel here. And Geelong are just damn good. And, you know, their midfield competence over the last five weeks has really come to the fore. And I think that will hold them in good stead for this game. I'll, I'll tip a close game. Now, I'll say about 18 points. But I'm tipping a Geelong versus Sydney grand final. Now, during the week, I did ask you guys for your preferred grand final matchup. And it seems like Sydney versus Brisbane was the major contender there. I would kind of like to see that too. It is the only possible grand final matchup that has not occurred before. Brisbane versus Ports occurred. Geelong and Port Adelaide obviously happened in 2007 as well. Quite a famous result, that one as well. So Sydney versus Brisbane would be cool. And I also think, you know, maybe it's just me, but I would like the aesthetic of Sydney's red versus Brisbane's maroon, just like we saw at the Gabba at the end of the year. I think that would make a cool grand final. And it would also be all interstate, which we haven't seen for 20 years. 18, sorry. The Eagles fans for hate me when I forget the last time that happened was 06. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think, what are your tips and predictions, what do you agree with, disagree with, what grand final do you hope you'll see? And for now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.